Hey everybody. Today I want to talk about fuel tank venting on the Camaros. Uh, fuel tank, can charcoal canisters, uh, and the, the plumbing, associated plumbing. Sometime back, when I first got the car on the road, I was having issues with uh, excessive pressure in the fuel tank. And, you know, if I parked the car after driving it, um, I could smell gas at the back of the car. And I had a lot of pressure in the tank. Uh, what I figured out was that the uh, overpressure valve that is mounted in the rear, what was it, left rear wheel well area, uh, left rear suspension, uh, was blowing off from, because there was excess pressure in the tank. And so I dug through, and again in the other video, I'll, I'll go back through some of that, but I had a bad valve up, up here under hood on the Camaro, uh, per, uh, a, uh, depending on the language, a purge control or a fuel tank control valve. And I was able to order a new one and install it, and that made things a, a whole lot better. Um, the valve was apparently um, from car being parked 25 plus years with bad gas and everything else, the diaphragm was bad and it wouldn't open. And while the valve, according to the schematic and the service manual, has an orifice, uh, that orifice must be really tiny and it certainly couldn't keep up with, with things. And the valve didn't open. Also, um, I did some experimenting where I actually removed that valve and went straight to the charcoal canister with a, with a hose, with a jumper fitting. And, and got rid of that valve. And that was bad. Um, because then, when the tank got hot, I could hear a gurgling, you know, sounds like the fuel was maybe boiling, or that the fuel um, pump was cavitating. Um, in any case, I could hear noises in the tank on a hot day. Hot day being, you know, 80, 85 degrees. I'm not talking about the desert here in Michigan. Um, and if I ran in traffic, you know, when the fuel tank got hot, a couple things. One is the exhaust runs close to the fuel tank. And second, you have a fuel return on these cars. This is tuned port. Um, you know, pressurized fuel is fed to the engine. And then the excess fuel goes through the regulator and gets fed back to the tank. So as that, as that fuel runs through the engine compartment, through the fuel line, it picks up under hood heat, and you send that heat back to the tank again. And I think you would find that throttle body engines do a similar thing. Uh, carbureted, I haven't followed the carbureted lately. Usually there's some uh, fuel feedback, but um, fuel return to the tank on the more modern engines to prevent uh, vapor lock and so forth in the, in the fuel lines. Uh, they try to keep fuel flowing. Uh, but I, uh, uh, be honest, I haven't uh, scienced those out on on the Camaros. So you, you have to look, the kind of the message is you need to look at your service manual for the application that you're working on. I'm going to mostly talk about tune port, but things are related, you know, if you have a throttle body injected or, uh, or if you have a V6 with, uh, with a fuel injected, port injected engine, um, principles are similar, right? There's a valve, like this, purge valve that goes in the plumbing down here you can see down where the tape and the white um, where that white uh, T, T is um, I put my vacuum gauge on it along with a vacuum source and tested it and there are actually two purge valves um, the first one is here on the canister and that one tests good which is good because you can't replace it without replacing the whole canister um, but the second one, you can see this line here goes back down to there, to the uh, that white T. And then from the white T, that line goes back to the tank. So that's the vent line. And when I tested this valve, that one right there, um, it is not operating. The diaphragm is bad, and so when you put vacuum on this port to open up the... the uh, uh, line to go to the canister, it wasn't opening. 
So to kind of prove that out, that's why I have it removed. Um, I put a jumper line in and and that white um, uh, connector T, um, which it's a T that's plugged off on one side. Uh, but anyway, what it let me do was hook the line from the tank straight to the canister, took it out and drove it, and uh, the problem seems to be much, um, that problem seems to be gone. Now, I still think I have some issues when, uh, when the tank is hot, it almost seems, it sounds as if the gas boils from time to time. So, I have a brand new uh, valve, a brand new purge valve. So I'll plumb that guy in and, and uh, put in the new filter and take it for a test drive. Now, one of the challenges working through this system is that my service information is not thorough and complete. Um, and it may just be the copy of the book that I have from my 1985. Um, it gives part of it, but I don't have anything on the fuel tank itself. Uh, for some reason, there's no depiction of that. And it actually doesn't show a picture, a schematic of the whole thing. Um, secondly, I'm going to walk over to a 1991 service system. Um, I'm going to show you the 1991 service information I have on my laptop. And I'll show you the schematic that they have there, which also is incomplete and not quite right. But So on my tuned port car, what you have is a charcoal canister. And number two there is where it picks up vapor from the fuel tank. And then there's a purge valve that's on this one permanently attached to the canister. You can't replace this one. And then uh, four is, this is a control valve where you put vacuum on here and it opens up the, the um, diaphragm so that flow can take place. And if this one breaks, um, there's, you, I, I haven't found any place where you can buy the part or a replacement canister. Uh, you'd probably have to f find a used part somewhere or um, Boy, I just don't know, but fortunately mine was working. I tested that um, The way this works is that as it says here in operation the ECM operates a solenoid valve that controls vacuums of the purge valve and And run and operates a solenoid so the engine needs to be warm, specified running amount of time above a road speed, above a throttle opening. And then you have a control valve that also opens up a, a second one, which is, which is this one that they call a fuel vapor control valve, which isn't depicted. So this is a picture of the canister with its valve and this is the solenoid valve that opens and allows vapor to flow and it's fed um, with a ported vacuum signal and then this one goes to manifold vacuum and is drawn in and, and fed to the engine as, as you pull the fumes out. I'm going to go over here to my laptop, and this is the 1991, and maybe they changed the canister because I haven't seen the 91 canister, but they don't depict the control valve that I had that I just showed you. Um, they do show the fuel valve, fuel pressure control valve here, this number 8, and and that one I have on my car as well, and I've checked and the part numbers match. They're the same. Um, the interesting part here is that you have this valve, but it does not show the vacuum line for control on it. And then it shows uh, number seven. It says a pressure and vacuum relief fuel vented fuel filler cap. And I'm sorry, my, I think that's just plain wrong. I'm, there is... 
I can't find any venting on my fuel cap. I have, you know, I have a correct cap. I don't think, you know, the intent of this system is that cap is sealed and all of your venting takes place here. This valve, this control valve, um, will vent the tank um, through an orifice and they depict the orifice back here. They don't show you the ported vacuum passage, so that's the purge passage that uh, pulls in uh, through the throttle body. And here's a picture of that fuel control valve, which has an orifice to vent your tank and a control line that goes to ported vacuum and then the ported vacuum will open and close the main passage and here they refer to it that that valve will hold five kilopascals five kpa or an inch of mercury now those aren't equal to each other they're sort of close um, I've seen some other data that suggests that that this valve holds because that would be like a half a PSI and I've seen other data that suggests this valve holds a, so like two PSI I don't know what it's calibrated at for sure so the only thing I can tell you is it was enough pressure to make my car run very well in hot weather and uh, when the fuel is hot because when I had that valve out and I was running the tank vented to the canister without this control valve, when it got hot, the car wouldn't idle properly. It would run rough when, at low speed. And the fix was to go to the gas station and put about five gallons of cool gas in it and chill the tank down. And then it was happy again for a while. So this valve is pretty important. Now I'm going to pop under hood here. First of all, I'm going to go to the throttle body. There are two hoses here. The big one goes around to the back side over here and, and goes to the intake. And that's your purge hose. That pulls vapor in. The small one is your signal and it goes to the underside of the, of the throttle body to a port that's basically um, covered by the throttle valve or in front of the throttle valve and so when you crack the throttle that will pick up a signal. Now if we track that line all the way back over here that's this line right here and so this is ported vacuum. There's nothing there when the throttle is closed, but when you tip in, come off idle, you get vacuum in this line and it goes to the canister and opens up this one that's attached to the canister and it opens up this one. This was my problem child. This one would be the one that would cause you overpressure in the tank if it's not working. Because what this will do then is pressure in the tank comes out goes into the canister and fills the canister with fumes with with vapor and I mean ultimately if the canister was overloaded with vapor it would just send vapor out the out the bottom um, and out to atmosphere now once the canister is filled with vapor These are the lines to ECM. This is supposedly, according to the book, this is normally open and the ECM actually closes it with power. So it would be when you'd start the car, the ECM would close it and shut this down so it doesn't pull any vapor. And then when you warm up, you, your engine has to be warmed up. Uh, you have to be above a minimum speed and I saw somewhere in the book it's you know on the order of 10 or 15 miles an hour 
then the ECM will turn it off and let this flow and then if you've tipped in you'll open this valve and of course that one but you'll open this valve and then through this larger hose and through the solenoid you'll start feeding vapor uh, up to the engine and into what they call purge and so what you will do is purge the canister if you have too much pressure in the fuel tank this is the valve you really want to go after and then and then if the valve is good there's a test which says disconnect this put a vacuum you know like a little hand vacuum pump on there and put what's the amount here See, with a hand vacuum pump, put 15 inches of mercury, 50 kPa. Um, through the control valve tube. Diaphragm should hold for 20 seconds. Oh, this is the one for the canister. So, let's, I'm sorry, let's go down one more. For the pressure control valve, it's the same test, right? Um, apply, va apply vacuum to it. The diaphragm should hold and then with the vacuum still applied uh, put a short hose on the tank um, tank tube side and blow into it and you should feel the air go through the valve if it doesn't go through the valve replace it so the two places you could be in difficulty are either the valve is bad and it's about a twenty five dollar valve you can you can buy these can't buy this one because it's part of the canister and the canister's out of production. And even the um, electric solenoid valve, I don't, I don't know the, if that's replaceable either. Um, if mine ever died, um, you know, I'd have to look for a used one or perhaps find some way to um, find a, find a um, set of valves off of some other car that are replaceable and you know build my own plumbing but but you need to have one of these it needs to be working right it needs to have these uh, vacuum lines uh, need to have ported spark on them now in different years you know the configuration may be different this is my 85 um, and if you have a throttle body car again it may be a little bit different and then there are ECM, these are ECM controlled. A lot of the carbureted cars are not ECM controlled and they have a, have a simpler canister with just a couple of hoses and a separate valve, mechanical valve, that does the same things, types of, does the same type of work that, that this one does. Uh, just with mechanical means and it probably isn't as precise because you don't have a computer controlling it but so going back to this schematic of the tank one more time now that I showed you the parts uh, recognize that there's a ported spark fitting in the vicinity of the throttle body in the near the throttle plates that controls the valve on the canister and controls this pressure control valve. And then once more um, the line, the fitting that's missing here is out of this, um, out of the fuel sender unit there's another line that comes over goes over to the rear suspension and there's a pressure relief valve over here that blows off in the event that this valve isn't working. And uh, and the one over here, the pressure relief valve, um, that one was unavailable for a long time, but I just saw recently that Hawks has got a reproduction of the original valve, and uh, that will be that will be really helpful for a lot of people uh, because if that valve doesn't uh, work correctly, again, you won't hold the right amount of pressure in the tank. Well, now that I've gone through that, I hope you understand a little more about how this system works and uh, hopefully uh, your car can run well too. That's all for now.